Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at making a little game like the one described in Chapter 4 of Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python. We're going to make some minor adjustments to make the game a little bit different, um, and I encourage you, as you're following along, to make your own adjustments, make a little, like, minor tweaks to the game for your, to make it your own as well. So, this week I'd definitely like you to read um, Chapter 4 in the textbook Invent Your Own game, uh, Computer Games with Python, and read through this. It's got a lot of very good information, very similar to what we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you're understanding what's going on, you can definitely just skim it, but definitely at least check it out um, and make sure you've got a firm grasp of everything it's talking about in here. Okay, it's a really great resource. Alright, so let's get started at making this game. So the game that it, the textbook chapter is describing and that I want to make is a game where you're guessing a number. So the computer is going to generate a random number and you're going to have a certain number of guesses to figure out what it is. Um, in, our, in the version I'm going to write today, I'm going to say there's five guesses. So if you guess the number within five guesses, you win the game. If you don't, you lose. Um, and after each guess, it will also tell you whether you're, the number you guessed was too high or too low. Okay, so it's pretty simple, but still kind of a, a fun little game. So let's get started. Uh, first thing, I want to put a comment at the beginning of my file. So I'm going to say name, Mr. McNally, uh, date, 2016, 3.30, for instance. Um, and then a brief description. So this is a um, uh, number guessing game. Okay, so the very first line of the program, remember the comments don't do anything. Those are just notes for, for us or for somebody else looking at your program, is the import statement. So I'm going to need the random module in this program to generate the random number every time the program is, uh, every time somebody plays the game, okay? All right, and then the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, something, a little nice line where I say, um, hello, what is your name? So I'm just going to figure out the person's name so that I can personalize some of the, the messages that I print out. And I'm going to generate a random number now. So I'm going to say the, the correct number, the, the number that the computer's thinking of, quote unquote thinking, is random.randint1 up to 100. So this is a little bit of a, a change that I'm making. The, the, program described in the textbook just goes from 1 to 20, I think, but I'm going to make the game a little harder because I think that's too easy, and go from 1 to 100 instead, okay? And this, remember, will generate a random number between 1 and 100, including 1 and 100, and store that value in the variable called number, okay? All right, and now I'm just going to print a little message. I'm going to say, hi, um, and then whatever name they entered. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Okay. And I'm going to make another variable called guesses taken. And I'm going to set that equal to 0 initially. So what this variable is for, remember, there's three important pieces of information that need to be keep that we need to keep track of in this program, okay? We need to keep track of what the number the computer thought of is, so what the random number is that's here in this variable number, um, and how many guesses they've taken. So that's going to be this variable called guesses taken. Uh, no surprise there, I guess. Um, so this is, before they've made any guesses, they've made zero guesses. So that's why it's zero initially, okay? So this once this gets to five, for instance, they'll lose the game because they've made five guesses and they didn't get it right. And the last piece of information we need to keep track of is whatever the user's current guess is. And we'll get to that in a second. So now it's time for uh, the game loop, okay? So check it out. So while guesses taken is less than five, do this. So here's what's going on here. Guesses taken is less than 5 is the condition. So if they haven't made 5 guesses yet, they get to keep playing the game. Right? Does that make sense? Once they've reached 5 guesses, once they've guessed 5 times, the loop here, this will now be false because 5 won't be less than 5. So we'll be done with the game. And we'll do some stuff at the end to print out um, an answer. All right. So I'm going to get a guess from the user using the input command. I'm going to say enter a guess, OK? 
okay and that will prompt them to enter a guess and as always I need to convert that to an int in this case because I want this to be a numerical value but the input command remember always returns a string so I have to convert it using the int command so that's nothing new there all right now let's do some checks if the guess is less than the correct number print out that was too low else if the guess was greater than the, the right number print out that was too high okay we're excited about that the exclamation point um, otherwise so if the so here's a challenging question if the guess is not less than the number or greater than the number what what must be true well it must be equal right because if the, if a number is not less than a number or greater than a number, the only thing that it could be is equal to the number. So that's why we're going to use the else here. And at this line, we're going to say break. All right. Now, here's a new keyword that we haven't really talked about yet, uh, but it's a pretty simple one. So what the break keyword does is just leave the loop. So it immediately says, okay, we're done. The loop is exiting now. So normally we just keep going we keep looping until this is false but in this case we're just gonna say okay we're done break end the loop now end it early okay because if they've guessed the right number we don't want to keep asking them for more guesses right there's no point if they if you if the number's 10 and you guess 10 we shouldn't then say okay you got the right answer but what's your next guess that doesn't make any sense so instead we're just gonna say break the loop at that point and we'll check it out later. Um, the last thing we need in this loop is a line to update the value of the variable guesses taken. So here's this variable. We gave it the initial value of 0, and we said while guesses taken is less than 5. So each time we iterate through this loop, iterate's a fancy word for like do something repeatedly. So every time each time we go through this loop, we need to add one to this variable. So I'm going to say guesses taken plus one. Guesses taken equals whatever it was before plus one. So that each time they make a guess, we record that. And eventually, once this gets up to five, they'll lose the game, or um, if it happened that they guessed it on their fifth one, uh, we'll record that instead. Um, and just one minor thing. I actually want to move this line up here. So, for instance, here, um, just so it's a little bit more uh, understandable what's going on here. So, it's going to say enter a guess, then record, then convert whatever guess they entered to an integer, and then say, okay, well, they just made another guess, right? That just happened. Here's, here's where they make the guess. So, we're going to say, okay, they made another guess, update the value, and then go ahead and do these checks. If their guess was less than the correct number, so it tell them it was too low. If their guess was greater than the correct number, tell them it was too high. Otherwise, their guess must be equal to the correct number, so exit the loop. Use the break command to exit, the break statement to exit the loop, okay? All right, and now this stuff here um, inside the loop is indented one level, right? Um, and then it's indented one level here. So that means it belongs to the loop, okay? This stuff here. And if I want to do something after the loop, so after guess is taken is no longer less than five or I've broken out of it, then I don't want to be indented. I want to be up against the side here. So at the end here, out, after I'm at, outside the loop, I'm going to say, well, if the last guess was equal to the correct number. So if they ended up with the right answer by the end, I'm going to print out uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congrats. Um, and then whatever their name is, which they told me at the very beginning here, um, when I asked for their name, say congrats, name. Uh, you guessed the correct number. Okay. Otherwise, so otherwise they must have taken all five guesses and that means they lost. So I'm going to say print you lose too bad. 
better luck next time. Um, and when I play this game, if I lose, I get kind of annoyed if it doesn't tell me what the actual number is, because you're kind of curious after you've been guessing at it. So I'm going to make it tell me that right as well. So the right number was, and then I'm going to use the fancy version of the print statement where I put the comma and then the value I want to print so that I don't have to convert number to a string to use the the concatenation operators here like I did with name which was a string so I could use the plus to combine it okay so um, let's I think we're good to go this looks like a complete program and feel free to make little changes make it your own um, print stuff that's uh, more funny than what I printed when they win or lose or whatever so uh, I think we're good to go let's run it and play the game oh figure out the most important step, right? I have to save um, save my file. So I'm going to say guess the number game.py and I'm going to say that my Python files folder, okay? So now I'm going to hit F5 to run. Hello, what is your name? Uh, Mr. McNally. Hi, Mr. McNally. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Enter a guess. All right, so I'm going to tell you uh, just briefly about an algorithm called the binary search algorithm. So a major, major part of computer science is the study and development of algorithms that perform uh, interesting tasks effectively. So this one's called a binary search. Uh, it's very useful for a lot of things like... A real world example is the best way to like look for a number in a phone book, for instance. So in a situation like this where it's telling me whether each guess is too high or too low, I can leverage that information to eliminate half of the possible um, options with each of my guesses. So for instance, the best initial guess is actually 50 because I know the number is between 1 and 100. So if I guess at the middle point, halfway, either way, if it tells me 50 is too high, then I eliminated all the numbers from 50 to 100. And if it tells me 50 is too low, then I eliminated all the numbers from 1 to 50. So it's eliminating the maximum number of possibilities with each guess. So I'm going to guess 50. It says that's too high. So now there's no reason for me to guess 50 or above. So I'll guess 25 is my next guess. And it says that's too low. So now I've with just two guesses, I've gone from 100 possibilities down to just 25 possibilities. So I know the number is now between 25 and 50. So the next guess is 37, for instance, would be about the halfway point between those. And it says that's too high. So now, with three guesses, I've gone from 100 possibilities down to uh, about 12 possibilities, okay? So I'll make another guess. Uh, we'll go with um, 31, I think. And it says that is too low. All right, so I've got one guess left, right? I've made four guesses. So the value of guesses taken is currently three, actually. Uh, or no, it's four. And the next time through the loop, the value of guesses taken will be five. So I'll lose the game if I don't get it right, right here. So I know the number is between what and what. Let's see. I just guessed 31. That was too low. Um... And I know that 37 was too high, so the number is either 32, 33, 34, 35, or 36. Um, at this point, there's no best guess. It's just kind of down to luck since it's my last one. Uh, I'll guess 34. Let's see how we do. Uh, that was too high, apparently. So it was either 32 or 33. Um, and it... In fact, it was 32. So it says, you lose, too bad, better luck next time. The, the right number was 32. Okay? So I could play the game again and maybe not do so terribly and uh, get the right number, but uh, I think you get the idea. There's no need for me to play it again, but of course you could play it as many times as you want when you write your own program. All right, thanks for your attention. Uh, I hope you thought that this game was a little bit interesting. Uh, I think it's one of the more fun programs we've written so far in this class. See you in the next video.